So one of my favorite things to do as I travel, I'm going to be doing the keynote tonight, but my favorite things to do as I travel is to be with the ladies, right? I mean, the guys aren't singing at a beaver and shaking their booties and having as much fun. I can tell you that, my friends, okay? They are not. And one of my favorite things to do with my girlfriends, so I live in, I live in Louisiana now, but I lived in um, Indiana for many years. And my girlfriends, yes, my girlfriends and I would get together and we would, we would hang out and like eat junk food and laugh. And what I want us to imagine in this huge auditorium, right, is that you're here in my bedroom. It's big, okay, with your bestest girlfriends, right? And you're eating your favorite junk food, big ice cream, you know, right here. Big tub, big tub, ladies. No calories, no calories in this tub. That's right, that's right. We're gonna eat till we're crazy and our heads explode and we're not gonna worry about it because we're beautiful. And um, what I want us to imagine is that we're just hanging out and being real together because let's, be, let's just be honest, we have a lot we have a lot of drama in our lives. Amen. Some girl on the back's like, mm-hmm. Amen, girl. We got drama, right? We got boys. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk about some boys. We got school. Well, not, not, not right now, but we have drama in school. We have friends and relationships. And what I want to imagine in this time period is that you're just hanging out with your girls and just sharing your life and really getting to the core of who we are as women and what we want. So as we start, I'm gonna get down here because I'm gonna get my, I'm gonna get all dirty. I wanna hear, okay, that's right. I'm not, I'm not distant, ladies. We're all, we're snuggling. All right, so first slide, first slide on my slideshow is the question is this, what do women want? So I don't want like your deep answer right now, like I want heaven and angels, which we do. We're going to get holiness. But like, just if we were hanging out, like, what do you want? I want a Starbucks. I want less frizzy hair. I want, I want, what do you want? Like, what are some things that you want? I'm going to run up. What do you want? Time out, time out, time out. What do women want? What do you want? I want food. She wants food! What else? I, I want, I want chocolate! What else? What else? What do you got? Say it. I want smooth legs. Woo! Check this out. How about this? I don't want to shave ever again. That's what I want. No more nicks. What else? What do you want? Oh, what, who else? Yeah. One Direction. What? We want One Direction. What else? Real quick. Anyone else down here? Yeah, yeah. What do you want? Channing for my Tatum. Channing Tatum? Channing Tatum! All right, that's good. We'll go back up. Woo okay. I'm out of breath. It's great. Okay, so I love doing that because when I travel around at other Steubenville's this summer, it's always been like chocolate, Starbucks, One Direction has come up many a times, you know? And it's so crazy because Media has been trying to answer this question. The guys are over there trying to figure out what the heck we want, right? We're trying to figure out what we want. And I think when we start off, the question kind of starts real high, like, I want chocolate. I don't want to shave again. <laughs> I want less frizzy hair. I want my mom to leave me alone, right? And then you go a little deeper, right? Like, I, I want to know what I'm going to do, when I what college I'm going to go to. I want to know what I'm passionate about. I want meaning and purpose in my life, right? And then you go a little bit deeper, and maybe it's about relationships, right? I want my best friend and I to get along like we used to, right? I want, I want a relationship. And I think if we go to the deepest level of our heart, what we want, ladies, is love, right? And I don't know, do we have my slides? If not, I'll just go without them. What do we want? Chocolate, next slide. What do we want? 
We see, let's check this out, you guys. We have love all around us, right? We see love everywhere, whether it's in vampires and um, Bachelor picking the one love that we want and on and on and on, right? Even the song, uh, Give Me a Reason by Pink. Is... <laughs> Some, I love that. She was like, ah, I love it. The words to that, listen up, guys. The words to that song is it's written in the stars, right? It's written in the scars of my heart. I'm not bent, I mean, I'm not broke, but bent, and I will learn to love again. What? She says that line, I love that line. It's written in the sky, oh, excuse me, it's written in the stars. Like, what is written in the stars? This is gonna be crazy, I'm gonna go on theology on you. What's written, if we look up to the heavens, what is written in the stars is our de desire for love. If we look up to the stars, this infinite stars with a million like lights, our desire from the depth of our heart is that we want love. And the only place that will fill that love is a, is a relationship with Jesus Christ. He's the only thing that can fill that deepest desire. And what we're gonna be talking about today is three things, okay? Because the saints, like when you look at the saints throughout times, um, Saint Therese, talked about the love, right? St. Therese, that's right. The, the little one talking about the perfect love found in Jesus. Um, St. Augustine always said, my heart is restless until it rests in you. St. Teresa of Avila would get in these moments of ecstasy, which is like a moment of being so filled with God's love that she literally would like explode. <laughs> Not really. You're like, whoa, that's intense but that we are made for the greatest love. And the, the worldly love, the love between man and woman is just an icon, an image that's supposed to point us to something deeper. And we gotta get this. So there's three things that we're gonna be talking about today and what the, how to fulfill these desires about what you want. Number one is, is we gotta know who we are. So look at, look at your friend and say, know who you are, girl. Okay, number two, is you cannot let the world rob you of who you are. Say, say, girl, don't be robbed. That's right. And number three, say, come to the fountain. All right. Some of you are like, fountains? I'm thirsty. Listen up. Shh. Shh. And a hush comes over the crowd. Hush. Those are the places. Know who you are. Don't let the world rob you of it. And come to the fountain the God of the universe who will fill every desire of your heart. That's what we're going to be talking about today. Number one, who are we, right? And our culture tells you a lot of images, a lot of messages about who you are in the world. I do a lot of traveling, and we could talk about any magazine or billboard or commercial, but let's just talk about some of the messages that are being sent out to you as women, okay? This is Glamour Magazine with pink on front. She says, let's see. <clears throat> so let's see what culture says about who you are as women, okay? Number one. It says, amazing skin. That's good. Okay. <laughs> we like that. Have you, um, have you tried the number one flirting technique? Well, no, I have not, Glamour. Please tell me. Right? It goes on. Um, I love this one. A guy, a bar, and a gun. I don't know what that means. But anyway, listen to this. Crazy hot sex, 10 secrets to intense action. Don't say it like that. It sounds really weird. Right? It says, fun, fearless lingerie. No. Try the sex diet to curb your appetite on and on, craving what sizzles and fizzles, my love attraction. How to flatter, um, have a flatter bust, butt, hips and arms and more. Plus, nine muffin top miracles. Awesome. I might read that one actually because sometimes the celebrity, okay. Sorry, too much information, but right. Instant sexy, makeup on and on. If I were an alien, okay, it's okay ladies, it's just a magazine. They're like, ah. Um, if I were an alien from outer space and all I had were these magazines, and it's, they're all, if you look at them, like sexy and what's hot and fizzles and sizzles and get your man turned on and sex positions and, uh, you know. And if I were, some of you are like, really? Yes. <laughs> if I were an alien from outer space and all I had were those magazines, I would think that the meaning of what it means to be a woman is how beautiful you are or how skinny you are and how you can use your body to get a man. Right? Amen. Like, that's everywhere. And, and the problem with that, ladies, is that all of us in this room, and this is for the youth ministers, all of us in this room have looked at a magazine or looked at a girl in a grocery store, mm -hmm, and we've compared our bodies to them. And then we beat ourselves up because we don't look like them. 
My butt is too big. My hips are, are too this. My breasts are too small. And on and on and on. And I want permission in this women's session to get real with you. Can I get real with you? Yeah. Let's just get real for a minute, okay? The problem with that is all of us have thought all of these things to the point of cutting ourselves, of like beating ourselves down, right? Of throwing up. And as I travel around the country, like I see these women and even myself who struggles with what I look like in the mirror. Like the world has distorted you in terms of your body. Your body points to a greater miracle, a greater mystery of God's love, that you are beautiful. Every hair in your head is counted. And the world robs you of that. I really struggle with that. I want you to hear that. As, as a woman who travels in ministry, like I will, I've just moved to Louisiana and the food is awesome. Okay, they fry every, and I mean, I, literally a couple, like two months ago, I was putting on this really cute dress, and I, I couldn't fit into it, true story, and I started getting, up, I started getting all emotional. <laughs> I called my girlfriend, I'm like, I can't even fit in my dress, and I talk to women about their beauty of their bodies, <laughs> and here, you know what I mean? And praise God, like, I have those, those fat days. Let's just be real. I have those days where you're feeling like nasty, nasty, and nothing you put on feels right, and you look in the mirror, and you think all the negative thoughts, and what I want to say as a woman on that journey is that we need to know the truth of who we are, that you are beautifully made. I don't care what you look like or what your hair looks like or, or, or what you think about yourself in the mirror, that God has created you by his hand. And when he sees you, he sees his glory. We have got to get that. Our, the world has distorted your bodies. The world has distorted it, and it's, like, it's wrecking us as women. It's wrecking us, and not only does the world distort our bodies, but it distorts sexuality. It distorts sex. Let's talk about some sex, okay? So like everywhere you look, right, our culture is bombarding us with messages about sex. Every TV show, every commercial has stories. And the problem is, is that some of these shows are funny. I always say that the, the devil wears a prom dress, okay? Mean, you're like, really? No. But meaning he makes sin look good. We see it all throughout television. I had a friend of mine who's a youth minister, loved uh, the show many years ago, Sex in the City. It was a very popular show. It's, it's kind of old now. Um, but when it was when coming out, it was really popular. The premise is four women living in New York, being sexually active. And my youth minister friend got really excited. He said, Sex in the City, that show is amazing. And he started going on about the show and how great it was. Now, those of us in youth ministry know that we probably should not be promoting these kind of, like, premarital sucks and all these things. And I said, Paul, stop it. Stop saying this show is so great. He said, no, Sex in the City, that show is amazing. Jersey Shore, that show is incredible. And he started going on and on about every show on television, and he stopped. He said, you know what? The devil did a great job with that one. I was like, that show is funny. New York City glamour. You guys are up in California. Like some of those shows, like they just draw you in with funny commentary. You know, in scripture, they call the, the enemy who is real. Satan is real. The father of lies and the deceiver. Because he takes sin and he camouflages it behind pretty faces and funny commentary. And we are utterly deceived. How many of you like to dance, right? I saw you shaking it. Woo, woo, right? I love to dance, and some of the, even the songs that are out right now, like, I, I love to dance, and I was going out to a dance club in my early 20s, and my friends all liked, I'm real, hello, I'm real, I want you to get this, I'm just like you guys, I get it. So we're going out dancing, and I listened to a lot of Christian music at the time, and I was, went to this dance club, and the music was not, like, the holiest music, okay, amen, it was, like, talking about women and witches and hoes and doing this and that with them, and you would have thought that every lady in the room would have been, like, with their drinks, this song is so disrespectful. Let's go, ladies. And simultaneously, we all just, you know, like storm out of the room. You know, you would have thought that because these songs sometimes are nasty. But no, no. The ladies are on the dance floor like, ha, you know, like shaking it. And you're all, sorry. You know what I'm talking about, right? I don't live in a bubble. We don't live in the yes, Lord, yes, Lord bubble. We live in the real world, right? We know what's going on out there. So all these ladies are like grinding and doing like crazy dancing. And I'm like in a fetal position with my rosary. Like, this is not normal. Like, you people, this is weird. You know, like I just came from a conference. And, and literally, right, this is a true story. This song came on. 
couple weeks later, because all those songs are ca catchy. Like, who doesn't want to wobble? You know, like, who doesn't want to do these fun songs? Have you heard the words in the song? Like, it talks about, I want you to vibrate, like, instead of your vibrate, like, and, and, and they have a, a term about like, talking about your vibrator. And we're like, let's just wobble. You know, like, we have to hear. Listen to me, ladies. We have to hear this, the music that's out there, what's going on in our culture. And anyway, this song comes on the radio. I'm, a couple weeks later, I know the words, literally. Months later, I'm on the same dance floor. I still remember where I was standing. God can convict you in a dance club. <laughs> And I am on this dance floor, and that same song comes on the radio. And I'm full out singing the words, doing the dance moves, you know, and I stop. Mid-dance move, and I'm thinking, what am I doing? Like, how is it that a couple of weeks ago where I come back from Steubenville, and I'm, like, really hearing the lies in our culture, and a couple weeks later and on and on, I'm just full out in it again. They say if you take a frog... Hang with me. And you throw it in boiling water, the frog will jump out immediately because of that water, the shock and the heat of that water. They say if you take that same frog and you put it in lukewarm water and you bring it to a boil slowly, the frog will literally kill itself without even knowing it. Just slowly and surely the temperature rises and we don't even notice. And sometimes that's us in this culture. We're so surrounded by songs and music and friends and all these messages that literally, slowly and surely, like our souls are dying. <sighs> okay, lady, you're getting kind of intense. You're, you're talking about killing frogs and dying souls. <laughs> Like, what are you trying to say? Are you trying to say that I can't listen to fun music? Are you trying to say that we all have to be nuns in South Africa? Yes. No, I was kidding. That would be awesome. We would take over the world. We would do so, we'd be so cute. Okay. No. We would. Full habits. Whammo. Dancing. I'm kidding. But no, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying, ladies, is know who you are. Know who you are in Christ. Because every magazine that we read and degrading song that we listen to, every television show that we watch in this culture of what our previous pope called the culture of death, we get robbed. We see these women that are like spitting on each other and hooking up in this whole culture that we live in. And we kind of laugh it off or we kind of like, oh, whatever. And I really believe that the Blessed Mother like weeps. Because she wants us to know that we are made for so much more than what this culture has told you. You know what I'm saying? And now, and I don't know what your story is. Like for me, many times in my life, like I lived in the gray. Because I went to the conferences and I did the yes, Lord, and the hand motions, and I did the dancing, but I didn't live that lifestyle 100% out there. And we can do that as Catholics. We can kind of live like a little bit in the, the, the Christian Catholic scene and then a little bit in like the world and the parties and the boys, and we kind of limbo back and forth because it's easy living in the middle. But ladies, when God calls us, he calls us Totally. Everything is yours, Lord. He wants it all. He doesn't just want part. And some of you, maybe that's you here today, living partly in the culture and living partly here. Others of you here, I think, are living in what I call, like, the culture of perfectionism. See, some of you, as I travel, I meet girls who come up to me and they say, Mary, you know, I'm, I'm, I really struggle with, with sex or sexting or I struggle with masturbation. or I, I hear it all. We're going to be talking about some of these real issues. And some of you are struggling with some real things. Others of you, you're, you're not struggling with those things. But your struggle is that you take these images, right, airbrushed images, and we just take them into the church. And so instead of being these perfect visual images, we have to be perfect Catholics, we have to be, like, involved in 800 million activities, right? You have to get A's on every single paper. You have to have it all put together. You have to be this and this because inside we're never enough. Do you feel that pressure as women? We've got to have it everything. Not only do we have to be beautiful, but we have to be smart. We have to get in the right college. We have to be successful. We have to compete against our friends and on and on and on. And the message is in our heart is if you saw how messy I am, you wouldn't want me. And so we just hide it. 
we just airbrush it with our yes lords and we, we're good Christians and we're going to try to do everything we can just to make it okay because what if we don't, we don't want to see what the world would think. And I want you to know today, whatever your struggle is, whether you're living half in the gray or if you're trying to do everything right, scared to death that you can't, that God wants you, he loves you. And he's calling you as his beloved to know who you are. We talked about yesterday a father's love. And the God of the universe, you guys, sent his only son into the world so that you could see what love was. And I don't know what your relationship with God the Father is or what your relationship is with your earthly father. And so many times we're, we're so seeking love in our lives. Like for me, I, I played three varsity sports. I, I was involved in student council. On, in high school, you would have thought that I had my act together. I mean, I had, every, I had awards, I had friends, but on the inside, I was never enough. I was never pretty enough, I was never funny enough. I'm like 5'11", came out of the womb, like 5'11". You know, like always tall, like the girl that's like a foot taller than all the boys, that was me. Insecure about my body. Yeah, some of you tall women, we'll talk later. If you're short, you got different crosses. We all have different crosses, it's okay. What I'm saying is like, I, you know what I mean? I'm never enough. I never was pretty enough, never funny enough. Like, I don't know what you think about when you look in the mirror. I don't know what you see. I'm trying not to blind anyone. I don't know what you see in the voices that come in your head when you look in the mirror and at night when no one's, when no one's you know, speaking to you at night. But what I, I want you to hear, there's this great uh, mystic called Justin Timberlake. Kidding, he's not a mystic. But he wrote this song called Mirrors. Have you heard it? And I love that song, right? Who, who knows the words to that song? Anyone? You, come on up, sing it. I need to start it off because I'm kind of low. Okay, help her out. <laughs> Can you guys sing with me? Okay. My, uh, um. I don't want to lose you now. I'm looking right at the other half of me. No. <laughs> Anyone else? That's great. Give it up. I'm not going to sing. I don't want to lose you now. I'm not even going to sing, okay? I'm not a singer. But listen, I'm looking right at the other part of me, the other half of me. When he starts singing that song about mirrors, about how much he sees himself in the other, I hear that song and I hear God the Father saying, I don't want to lose you now because you are made in my image. I see the other half of me, my beloved daughter. Like when you hear Justin sing that song, I want you to hear that's a God the Father, as weird as that sounds, because it's Justin Timberlake, coming down and saying, like, I see you and you are a reflection of me. Like a dad looking at their little girl in their eyes and saying, I love you. I love you so much. You were made in my image. You were made with my DNA and my hair. Remember when Father said the, the big eyebrows and little mouth, like, you are mine. I love you so much. I would do anything for you. And when we know that love, nothing can touch it. Like, I, I remember, I, and I don't know if you struggle with that. My whole life I struggled with knowing the love of the Father. Knowing that my dad loves me because my dad was too busy or distracted. And I don't know where your relationship with your earthly dad was. And your, your earthly dad might be imperfect. I don't know. But your earthly dad is not a reflection of the Heavenly Father. The Heavenly Father is a perfection. Did I say that right? Of your earthly father. Your heavenly father is the perfect father. And he wants to delight in you. The problem is, is that when we don't know that we're loved, like that we're beautiful, that we're made in his image. I mean, not just here. Because I went to so many conferences and I'm like, yeah, I know God loves me. And I can sing the songs, but I don't know it here. You know what I'm saying, ladies? I don't know it here. Until I knew it here, like I went to um, college and when I went to, I had my conversion at college and I went to a Steubenville conference and somebody started speaking about God's love. 
And I, and I, I don't know what, God started moving in my life and I went to a, another conference following it called Defending Your Catholic Faith and I struggled so much with my Catholic faith. And there was a Carmelite nun that came across stage in a full habit, boom, rosary to the floor. And I have no idea what she said. But she started talking about the love of God. And I ran up to her with a million questions. And I was like, what about this? And what about homosexuality? And what about all these things? And she said, Mary, just keep praying. It's so beautiful. And I was like, the Catholic Church? God's love for you is so beautiful. And I, there was another young lady who was discerning religious life. She was like wicked more holy than I was, okay? And she ran into the, my room later that night in tears, like the ugly cry. You know what I'm talking about, ladies? Like the, you know, snot flying out. Like lip quivering, <laughs> like crying. And I remember she just was like, I love Jesus. I don't care what he does or what he wants. Like, I don't care what he asks. I'll go to South America. And she imagined being at the Steubenville Conference and the girl you don't know next to you is just crying, saying, I want God. I will do anything. And as she's crying her eyes out, I look there and tears just start coming out of my face because I don't know that love. And I'm certainly not willing to give my life for it. Like, I drove, I drove home from meeting those sisters and that friend in silence, thinking, what in the world is that? What causes a teenage girl to come into my room sobbing? What causes these nuns and these, these saints and these martyrs to do these incredible things? And it's because they have encountered the love of the Father. And, and when you encounter the love of the Father, nothing can touch you. And for the first time when I started realizing that my dad loves me, my heavenly father loves me, like my life started changing. For the first time, I didn't have to be pretty. I didn't have to be a size two. I didn't have to have it all together. I just had to be his. <laughs> Do you know how freeing that is in a world that tells you you have to be so many things? Ladies, the only thing that you have to be is the beloved daughter of a king. And you got to know it. Because when we don't know it, we start looking for love in all the other places, right? And dating and clothing and popularity. Let's just talk about dating. Mm-hmm, let's do this, okay? I have dated some men. <laughs> Believe it or not, you're like, really? Yes. And um, I used to be really good at flirting, but now I'm really horrible at it. But so I went and I, I met this Catholic guy, right, at a prayer meeting. And I'm like, ooh, he fit my, like, my dating list. You know what I'm talking about, ladies? Mm -hmm. Guys don't know we have the list, but we do. So I'm like, I have this list, and I'm like, he's really tall and cute. I'm like, mm hmm, you're tall. Check. Because <laughs> I'm tall, you know? I'm like, mm, you're Catholic. Check, check. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, mm, you're cute. Check. You're like, mm. You have teeth. Yeah, you know, like sometimes you're like, okay, you have teeth. I can date you. Like, kidding. But you know what I'm saying. Not really. I had been single for so many years. So this guy, like, he was cute. He was tall. He was all these things. I'm like, great. I put my flirt on. Mm -hmm. And we started dating. And lo and behold, like, even though he was Catholic, he didn't treat me in the way that a good holy man should. And he started pressuring me sexually. He started pressuring me to do all these things with him and not treating me well in front of his friends. You know what I'm saying? And what did I do? I just stayed in it and I just laughed it off because I wasn't strong enough. And, w and eventually I called up my girlfriend, upset, like I always do. You know what we do when we're upset. <sighs> Call up the girlfriend. And I was complaining about this guy. And my friend said, why are you dating him? And of course I pulled out my list. <laughs> She's like, no, really, why are you dating him? And I think the honest answer in my heart is that I just wanted someone to tell me I was beautiful. I had been single for so long, right, ladies? Like sometimes you feel like you have like some weird disease because the culture is telling you lies that that's your worth. It's just finding some other man. So many times we're hungering for love that we settle for these scraps. We settle for these guys that don't treat us well, right, that don't treat us res with respect. Not only do we, we, we try to gain that love in relationships, but we do it in even how we, how we dress. Let's talk about how we dress, ladies. By the way, you look very cute in your T-shirts. But let me just tell you, like, I had a friend of mine who came in, and she, we, the theme of my life is dancing. So we are going out dancing in college. And she, she was very well endowed. 
You know what I'm saying? She had some tatas, okay? So she comes in. Sorry, can I say that? She had some tatas. It's okay. They were beautiful and given by God. So she comes in, and she had some tatas, and she's like kablamo hanging out. You know what I'm saying? Like just obviously not wearing a very modest outfit. And her, her comment to me is, do I look hot? Would you, would you want to do me? Kind of jokingly. And um, I know we hear, we hear worse in the, in the locker rooms or in the bathrooms sometimes, ladies. I'm just saying. Some girls are like, What? She said that, yes. So she said, like, would I look hot? Would you want me? And it, and it surprised me because usually I think, like, can you see my rolls? Does my butt look big? You know? but, but, it, but what is our intention in how we dress? And I think here especially, cause I live in New Orleans now, and it's warm and it's hot. So I know it's tough. In California, like, it, I get it. It's hot. And you're like, what do you want me to wear, a moo? Like, walk around, like, covering everything? Like, no. I want you to look beautiful. But we have to be aware of how we dress, Right? Like the men in the other room right now are talking about how difficult it is to honor us, right? They are very easily swayed. It doesn't take much. An ankle sometimes, ladies, okay? <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> so we, and and I'm, I'm not saying it like some of you like, it's not, your, it's not our problem. Like, yes, they have, to, they have to work on being men of God, but we have to help them. We have to be aware of how we look. And this is my question. If you are a woman of God, why don't we want to dress that way? We have to be aware, like showing off our cleavage, those really short shorts that are in right now, I want to just call you to not wear too short of shorts where you're too, sh you know, where it's too high, okay? Where your privates are hanging out and you're like, it's very tight. Like to be aware of like the, the tight leggings and all of those things. I'm not saying you can look very cute. You can, I, I want you to be gorgeous. Please hear me and fashionable. But be aware of how we dress and what it means. Because those guys out there are very, 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 very visual. And here's the deal. I don't want men, like sometimes we, we want men to like look at us and think that we're hot and sexy. We say that all the time, right? Because our culture is telling us like be hot, be sexy. And I just want to be real, like I don't want a man to look at me and be like a caveman, like hubba hubba. She looks hot, me wanty want, like uh, you know, like get them all fired up, like, you know, oh, like I don't want a man, you know, we hear like guys whistling at us and yeah, it, it's, it's nice to feel attractive. But I don't want a man lusting after me like I'm a piece of meat. I want a man to cherish me. You know what I'm saying? I want a man to cherish me. And sometimes we use a, the clothing we use, because we know how to work it. Our whole life we are told as women to manipulate men to get what we want. And nowadays, like, a lot of times I have guys come up to me and you're like, you know what, Mary, you guys are giving guys a hard time, but it's the women who are sexually aggressive. And a lot of times it's the ladies now who are becoming more of the seductresses, <laughs> you know, because we're told, work it, how to get him turned on and two words or less, you know. Oh, my. You know, like, weird, right? We hear that all the time. We know how to send the innuendos, a little wink on the, on the text. We know how to work it. We're good. See, in the outside, we look all pretty, but in the inside, we're like, I'll cut you. <laughs> we're like stealth ninjas. They have no idea, right? We're vicious. And so what I'm saying is we have to be aware that everything that we do, everything that we do from the clothing that we wear to what we put in, on our texts, right? Father talked about this yesterday, so to how we carry ourselves, to how we dress, has to be aligned with who we are in Christ. Because the culture is robbing us, and we're robbing ourselves. And if you're here and you're like, Mary, you know what? No guy is going to look at me. I want you to know there's a God of the universe that is coming for you today. And I don't know, like in terms of sexuality today, I don't have a lot of time to go into to chastity in all the ways. I know that a lot of times in women's talks, that's all they talk about. But I think more than anything, we as women need to hear that, that there is a God that's going to fulfill the deepest desires of our heart. And whether or not you are here and you are sexually active, or you're here and a guy has never kissed you before. I want you to know that God has a plan for your chastity. That when you were formed, you were made with a great plan. And that your chastity, your sexuality points to a great mystery in heaven. And when we live outside of that plan, not only because the Bible tells you so, but it's the fullness of our life. The sacramental life points us to a deeper mystery. And when we live outside that plan, that's when we get hurt. And I travel around the world, or the world, hmm, okay. I travel around the country, and I meet young ladies one after another who have given their gift of their sexuality away. And they're broken, and they're torn. 
I had a friend of mine who cried because the guy didn't hold her when she gave away her virginity. I had another friend who got a sexually transmitted disease, right? And she's like, Mary, she was weeping with me. And she's like, man, no one's ever going to think I'm beautiful again. And I've seen girl after girl who, after girl who's given away this gift, wishing that they could get it back again. And the cool part is that wherever you are, right, God can make you new. The lie of Satan in our lives is that when we, when we mess up, and it could be from giving away our gift in, 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 in sexuality, it could be the way we treat our friends, wherever it is, like the shame of our sins can keep us away and hide. And the reality is, is that Christ wants to go right into your shame, into your deepest muck, into the stuff that you don't want to tell anyone and tell you, I love it, I love you, you're my beloved, I want to make you new. And there's a story in scripture um, of a woman, the woman at the well, and I love this story, I want to end with this story. And those of you who don't know the story, it's in John. And the woman at the well um, is a beautiful story because the woman at the well is a uh, Samaritan woman. And she's coming to get a drink of water from the well in the middle of the day. Now, they're in the heat. No one gets water in the middle of the day, okay? And so the understanding of those who have done commentary on this scripture reading is that she's going to in the middle of the day because she's an outcast. And as you read the story, she's living not with her husband, but she's living in a life of sin. And the girls are talking smack. Amen, ladies? You know what that's like? The girls are gossiping. So this girl's an outcast from her friends, the girls in her life. She's, she's living in sin. She's broken. She feels unloved and unworthy. And the God of the universe meets her at midday at this well. And I want to share with you a monologue of what I think that would sound like. So this is, what, this is Mary Bielski's monologue of what it would sound like if she came in to the room and she was telling you what happened. It's in John 4. And it goes something like this. After she meets Jesus, she comes to the community and starts telling them what happened. So this is me coming to the community and telling you what happens. Okay. <laughs> Come quick. Come quick. I met him. I, I met the Messiah. I met the one that we've been talking about. I I you're not, you're not going to believe what just happened. I'm not, I, met, I met him. No. Okay, you guys are thinking I'm crazy. Um, oh, wait. <laughs> Let me, let me just tell you what happened. So I, I, was, I was going to the well in the middle of the day, like I always do, because it's, it's easier that way. You know, the other girls aren't snickering and talking. And I went to the well, and, and there was this man just sitting there, this Jew. And as I was trying to get water, for the well, he, he asks me for a drink. Okay, here I am just trying to mind my own business. I just don't want anyone to talk to me. And this Jew asks me for a drink? Like, how can a Jew ask me, a Samaritan, for a drink? Like, Jews don't talk to me. Men don't talk to women. Well, I just stood there with my mouth opened. It probably was like for 10 minutes. And he leans in and he's, he smiles. And he said, if, if, you knew who I, if you knew who I was, you would ask me for a drink and I would give you living water. Well, I looked at him and he didn't even have a bucket. Like he's just sitting there and I'm like, okay, Okay, like, sir, this well is deep, and this is Jacob's well. Like, wh you don't have a bucket. How are you able to give me water? And he looks at me again, and now he leans in, and he points to the well, and he says, those who drink from this well will thirst again. Listen to this. He says, those who drink from this well will thirst again, but those who drink from the water that I want to give it will be like a spring of new life into eternal life, and they will never thirst again. Like, he started talking about this water, and I realized he's serious. Okay, I'm tired. 
I don't want to walk to this well anymore. I told him, okay, sir, give me this drink. And he asks, he says to me, listen, he says, go get your husband. I looked at, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't have, I don't have a husband. And he knew, he knew this man, he started telling everything about me. He knew about Michael and he knew about John and he knew about, he knew about all the men that I had been with. He knew that the man that I'm living with now wasn't my husband and the way he looked at me, he didn't condemn me. He started speaking into my heart in ways that I have never experienced. And I'm telling you, I met him. Like I met the God of the universe who, and he wants to give me everything that I've ever wanted. And I know you think I'm crazy. Like, you know what, you think I'm a slut and you think I'm messed up, but he didn't care. He's giving, he wants to just give me everything that I desire. And as we sat there for hours, it was like no one else in the world was there. It was just me and him. And he loved me in a way that no one else has. And I want you guys to meet him. And you guys are thinking I'm crazy. I know him. I know you think I'm crazy, but I met him. I met the man that wants to give me every desire of my heart. And I don't have to live with Mike anymore. I don't have to text those millions of men. I don't have to do all these things like I met him and I get it. And I want you to meet him too. Will you meet him? Can you imagine women? If we began to be a church of women who hungered for God like that, who in our brokenness, and I want to tell you right here, I'm broken. I'm not, I don't have it all figured out. I still struggle in my life, but I have met the God of the universe that called me by name. And I want you to meet him too. And it doesn't matter your story, whether or not you have been sexually active and given away your gift, or if no guy is ever going to look at you, the God of the universe is calling you to the fountain to say, I want to give you life. All the ways that you're looking for love and the boys and the friends and the Facebook and texting, like, it's never gonna, it's never gonna fill you. Like, let me fill you with more. Let me give you everything that you hunger for. And when you taste it, you will be changed forever. Like, this is the gospel message. He doesn't come for the perfect. He doesn't come for the, the pretty imaged women. He comes to the broken ones that need a savior. The say, God, I can't do this without you. I, I, I do a lot of traveling and speaking, and I was at a conference, and I'll end with this story, and then I just want to pray with you ladies. And I want to go deep in the well of our hearts. Like, I'm so tired of us just going through the motion. I want us as women to, to go deep into the love of a God who wants to call you by name and give you new life. I was traveling a, about a summer ago, and I was giving this talk. Um, about Peter getting out of the boat and walking on water. We all heard this story, right? And I love this moment in my ministry. It was one of my favorite moments because when I give talks, I never know what I'm gonna, what I'm gonna meet. I, 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 I hear thousands of people email me and, and share their stories with me. And I, I gave this talk and this young lady ran up to me just sobbing, again, the ugly cry, you know, like, snot is flying, like the lip is quivering, and I'm freaked out because I don't know what's coming, you know? Like when you guys come up to me with stuff, my heart is like, oh Lord, please give me the words to say. Help me to love her. I don't know what she's going to say. Is it going to be rape? Is it going to be brokenness? Is it going to be eating disorder? Is it going to be loneliness? Is it going to be, what is it? Oh God, and she comes up and she's like snotting and she can't even talk. And she's like, Mary, Mary. She's like crying out. And I'm like, please, Jesus, please, Jesus, 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 please come. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, come. And I'm like looking at her so gently. And she's crying out and she's like, Mary, I'm like, yeah, 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 come on, shh, you're safe, you're safe. Mary, I, I, I don't, I don't know how to, 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 to get out of the boat. 
I thought, what? <laughs> it's a true story. Sobbing at a Steubenville conference. I, I don't know how to get out of the boat. I hear you preaching about Jesus. I hear you talking about a life that's greater than I could ever imagine. I hear you talking about women that are living in freedom and that love themselves and that give life to other people. The thing that I desire, do you guys want to do that? Do you want to be that? Like that woman that you see and you're like, oh my gosh, she's imperfect and it's okay. And she's alive and she's loving. And you're like, I want to be like her. Like she heard the message and says, I want that, but I have no freaking idea how to get there. You guys, in that moment, it was like a hallelujah. I started crying, I was like, praise Jesus, because if we could just be women, women to call out for a God and a savior to say, I need you, in the messy cry, you know what I'm saying, ladies? Like getting in, the, in, the, in not the perfect stance, like I don't want your resume. This session is not for the holy people. This session are for the women at the wells that need a God who wants to come and make them new. This session is for the ones that feel alone in their lives, that need more relationships, that need healing and, and new life. That's here. And we gotta be women willing enough to cry out, to say, God, I want you and only you. And in this session, ladies, I don't know where you're at, but I wanna ask if you would dare with me to cry out with God.